so we have seen for the situation when sigma is known to us the other case which is um, we have been studying is when sigma is unknown so whenever sigma is unknown we know that the t distribution comes into picture so let me just import numpy as n p and from scipy dot stats import t distribution because we are going to work with t over here np dot random dot seed let us take that as zero true mu that is the true population parameters true mu is equal to 5.0 and we are going to generate a random sample of size 100 and the data sample variable would contain your np dot random dot normal So true mu 2.0 that is what we have taken already. So we have not defined sigma. So let us take a sigma as 2 and sample size. Now we have to calculate the sample mean and the standard deviation sample standard deviation. So for that we need to write sample underscore mean for this we would use numpy libraries mean function so here we would write data sample and sample underscore std that is for standard deviation np dot we will use the std function for this data sample would be there and we would also specify that the sample variance has to be calculated for this we specify ddof as 1. Next we are going to set the confidence level. So confidence level let us keep it as 0.95. You can change it and see what will be the resultant. Now we will calculate the critical t value. So for calculating the critical t value, so alpha would be 1 minus of confidence level and your t critical from t we will write t dot ppf 1 minus alpha by 2 and degree of freedom would be n minus 1 that is sample size minus 1. So here we have what we have done we have specified the confidence level 0.95 so 95 percent confidence level is there and your alpha is defined that is we have calculated the significance level and t critical value this is the critical value and this t dot ppf function is from your scipy's t distribution module that we have imported already. So this calculates the percent point function or you can say it would be the inverse of the cumulative distribution function for the t distribution. Okay. So here, here we specify 1 minus alpha by 2 this is the first argument and this calculates the desired percentile. Alpha by 2 means that you are considering half of the significance level on each tail and this we have seen that this is n minus 1. Right now you can calculate the margin of error MOE. So this one would be T critical into the sample standard deviation that is sample STD sigma S by root N right. So S by root N. So let me use NP dot square root NP dot SQRT of the sample size. Finally, we would calculate your confidence intervals. So, CI, let me write CI. So, CI would be sample mean minus MOE 
and sample mean plus MOE. Okay, so if I want to see what is the sample mean, so let me just write. So sample mean, what was the sample mean? That is 5.11. Original parameter was 5 and let us see what is the confidence interval in this case. So it is 4.717 to 5.521. Okay, so we have obtained an interval for your population parameter that is population mean when sigma is unknown by using the t distribution as well. So earlier we saw the case when sigma is known, so we use the normal distribution in that case. So t dot p instead of t dot percent point functions, we used if you can recall here, we used norm dot ppf from normal distribution since here we are using t. So we have written for t distribution and then margin of error is calculated. You can give a proper command for printing as we have done earlier also in this case that print true population mean, sample mean and confidence interval. So here I have directly written. So now let us begin with the confidence interval for population variance. So confidence interval for population variance. So for this we are going to import numpy and so numpy as np and we are going to import from scipy.stats import chi-square because here if you can recall for variance we need chi-square distribution and we will specify np.random seed as 0 over here you can write any other non-negative integer now we will define your true population parameters. So let us consider that the true sigma that we have is 4 or so let me write instead of sigma let it be variance. It means sigma is 2 in this case. We are writing sigma square. Okay, Variance. We are dealing with the variance. Now we are going to generate a random sample from your normal distribution. So sample size let it be 100 data underscore sample again this would store random numbers generated from your normal distribution so this one would be 5 mean 5 variance sigma 2 and sample size now you can calculate the sample variance so sample variance as we know it would be np dot var using numpy this function and we would write data dot data underscore sample with the degrees of freedom as one specifying that we are calculating the sample variance and not the population variance then you would set the confidence level conf level let me just write a short form it is 0.95 okay so 95 percent confidence level is there after specifying these things, we need the degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom, so df. So you can keep on adding the comments as I've done here. So you can write for two population parameters. So maybe it is it is just to make you remember that what you did at that point of time and what, what is happening in this code since here we don't have sufficient time so i'm not writing it everywhere sample size minus one so degree of freedom is specified now we have to calculate the critical chi squared values so here calculate the critical chi squared values so here first one would alpha would be one minus of confidence level conf level let me just write it and chi square lower it would be chi 2 dot ppf alpha by 2 
and degree of freedom would be this that we have specified similarly you can write for your chi square upper so let me just write over here so here it would be 1 minus of alpha by 2 so here first of all we have calculated the significance level for your confidence level that we have in defined over here so it would be 1 minus of confidence level this now we will calculate your lower critical chi squared value based on the significance level alpha by 2 and the degrees of freedom this will determine the lower bound of the confidence interval for the population variance and on the other side you will calculate the upper critical chi squared value based on the confidence level it would be 1 minus alpha by 2 and the degrees of freedom would be specified okay now we can calculate the confidence interval for population variance so let c i be degree of freedom n minus 1 into the sample variance that we have calculated sample var divided by chi square upper right you have chi square values chi 2 underscore upper comma df into sample var divided by chi 2 underscore lower okay finally you would print it so these are the steps that we have already performed in your theory and now we are just implementing that so let us see what will be the true population variance so that we have taken as true where i think yes so that was four for us now we want to print the sample variance sample variance because it is built around that so sample variance is this sample where and next finally is your confidence interval So true population variance was 4, sample variance came out as 4.10 and confidence interval is 3.16 to 5.58 with your confidence level of 0.95. So now with 95% confidence level, we are proposing this as the confidence interval for your population variance. So you can change these parameters and you would get different confidence intervals. Basically, this code over here demonstrates how to compute a confidence interval for the population variance using the chi-square distribution. Last but not the least, so we can see, we have seen till now your confidence interval for mean different cases, and we have also seen the impact of changing the sample sizes on the confidence interval length. Confidence interval for population variance is also done. Last one for this week is your confidence interval for population proportion so again we will be importing different libraries from here so first of all import numpy as np and from scipy dot stats import norp so now we would write np dot random dot seed zero so 
so what will be the true population proportion let us take that as uh, true prop as 0.3 next we are going to generate a binary sample that is zeros and ones to represent a population proportion so for this the sample size let it be 200 and the data sample would be np dot random dot choice so here we are specifying 0 comma 1 size would be your sample size okay and p would be 1 minus true p p is 1 minus true p to true p okay sorry i have written true proportion so let me just write true prop yeah so basically here we are generating a random binary sample so we use np dot random dot choice to randomly select values 0 and 1 for your sample p parameter over here is used to specify the probabilities of each value so in this case we have set it between this which means that you have a 70 percent chance of getting 0 and 30 percent chance of getting 1 based on the specified true population parameter so now you have basically with this in line you have a sample with zeros and ones and that you are going to use to estimate the true population parameter okay so you have to now calculate the so let me write calculate the sample sample proportion so for calculating the sample proportion we will use np dot mean the data sample that you have obtained here confidence level we will set the confidence level So confidence confidence level would be 0.95 your critical value we will calculate the critical z value because in binomial you can recall we use the normal distribution because of the approximation that we studied okay so for calculating this we need alpha so alpha we have seen that would be 1 minus of confidence level and your z critical value would be norm dot ppf 1 minus alpha by 2 so here again we are using this percent point function to calculate your z critical value once this is calculated as you can recall from previous cases also the next thing is to calculate the margin of error margin of error so margin of error in this case would be z critical into sorry np dot square root sample prop into 1 minus p into 1 minus p right so sample prop into 1 minus sample prop z alpha by 2 under square root of p into 1 minus p divided by the sample size Once you have calculated this, you would calculate 
the confidence interval for the population proportion. So, CI is sample prop minus your margin of error and the other side it will be sample prop plus margin of error. Finally, you can now print what are the true population parameters. So, let me first run this. If you want to give the print command that also is fine or if you directly want to see. So, we have true proportion as so let me just write true proportion over here came out as 0.3. Let us see what was the sample proportion. 0.27 and let us see the confidence interval that we have now 0.208 to 0.331. So, this contains your true population with 95 percent confidence. So, you can see that sample proportion or if you just look at the point estimate, it is just going to give you a single value as the output and as you change a single value in that sample the sample proportion is going to get updated. Now, instead of that, if you give an interval and you say that uh, we are like this person confident that it is going to be in this um, interval. Now, so we are given a range of values for the true population parameter to fall between these two. Okay, so, instead of giving a single value, you have given an interval estimate for your population parameter. So, this basically completes your week 11. And in the next week, we are going to learn about two sample problems. We are going to see how to obtain confidence interval in that case. And we are also going to learn about the concept of bootstrapping. Thank you.